Manitoba announced today it's buying its own vaccines, 2 million of them, from Canadian company Providence Therapeutics. Its vaccine candidate is undergoing human trials, but it likely won't be manufactured until the end of the year if it gets Health Canada approval. Here's where the federal government's vaccine delivery stands. So far, 1.4 million vaccines have been delivered to Canada. Over the next few weeks, this is what we're expecting from Pfizer and Moderna. If you total it all up, it brings us to 3.3 million doses. The companies have not yet indicated how many doses they'll send in the last two weeks of March, but they would have to send about 2.7 million doses to meet the promised 6 million target set out by the feds. For more on this, I'm joined now by Manitoba's Premier Brian Pallister. Hi, Premier Pallister. Good to see you as always. Thanks for making the time. You bet, Vashi. Premier, I interviewed the CEO of Providence Therapeutics a few weeks ago, and at the time he said his vaccine, which of course still has to go through regulatory approval, couldn't begin to be mass produced until at the earliest late this year. So how does the deal you've reached actually help address the current supply issues your province is facing? I think it's fair to say, Vashi, it's insurance. It's a, you know, we hope we don't need these vaccines. We are hopeful that the federal government will be able to deliver vaccines, but we've seen uh, the interruption obviously that concerns everybody. And we know that moving towards more domestic production is a good idea. And we think uh, having the available uh, production here in Canada helps everybody. For us in Manitoba, we want to have uh, the security of knowing that if, if we don't need the vaccines for this year because we've uh, had the federal government's supply upgraded, we may well need them for boosters next year or for renewal of the vaccine or for, uh, example, variants that come down the pipe. And, uh, you know, other pandemics could come. It's wise for us to have that domestic production here in Canada. And when it comes to uh, where it will be manufactured, it was interesting because when I talked to the CEO, he was in the midst of basically, they're in the midst of building a facility in Calgary, but it's going to be manufactured in Manitoba. Is that is that accurate? And if so, why did you want to pursue that route? Well, first of all, we, we want to make sure we have vaccines. I mean, that's the number one issue. We're all cognizant that we've had problems. The federal government has acknowledged that we're, what are we, 37th uh, on available vaccines to our population. Uh, counting on, you know, other countries to supply our needs isn't a secure approach long term. We know that. It isn't working now. Why would it work in uh, another year or two? So having that domestic production uh, available to Manitobans and more broadly to Canadians is, uh, I think it's wonderful insurance, as I said before. Certainly, I, I acknowledge the point that so far leaning on uh, the supply of, of countries based in other, or sorry, companies rather based in other countries is not at this juncture working. There was a deal struck, though, uh, I think it was just last week with Novavax to produce along the same timeline, really, as uh, the vaccine you're talking about. Basically, by, potentially by the end of this year, there would be mass production of, the va of that vaccine. So the federal government is pursuing uh, that route to some degree. Yeah, sure, and, and applause for that. Uh, the, you know, I think there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, provincial governments reaching out and looking for other options. This is uh, who delivers health care. And after all, uh, although the federal government has taken on the role of uh, buying it for now, uh, the approach of all the provincial governments uh, cooperatively or individually looking to secure supply is a good thing. It's a good thing for Canadians to have more vaccines sooner rather than uh, less vaccine uh, uh, than we have right now. If the, uh, if the vaccine doesn't end up getting approval, what, what is the scope of the investment uh, that, that your government stands oh. to lose? Sure, well, obviously we're, uh, you know, it's about a $50 million uh, investment. The contract we will release, but it's not finalized at this moment. 20% uh, down, 40 on approval, 40 on uh, product delivery. Uh, but uh, beyond that, we believe that this is a company that can produce, it has a record of producing quality product. It's one of only two in Canada that does the whole uh, RNA uh, technology. I won't pretend to understand, but I do understand that uh, we will be able to secure uh, vaccines from this company when they are approved by Ottawa. And we hope they speed up the approval process subject to the obvious requirements that uh, Moderna, Pfizer, other companies have had to comply with. Uh, because we believe this is good news for Manitobans and we think in the longer term it's good news for Canadians as well. 
Okay, Premier, before I let you go, I do want to ask you about rapid tests as well. And, and I heard you get a, a question based on our report last night at your press conference around why Manitoba has used, uh, according to the information we got from your own public health officials, about 1.49% of the tests it's received. And I heard you talk about a, a lack of reliability. And I just want to challenge you on that point because I look back at some of the things sure. your ministers have said around the procurement of those tests. I, uh, for example, in October, your central services minister was frustrated that Ottawa had blocked sales of the Abbott ID Now tests. Uh, in November, I think it was, uh, your health, your then health minister was calling for Manitoba to be a priority to receive more tests because only 4,000 at that point had been received. So is it really a problem of reliability or has your government just not been able to scale up the use of them adequately? It's, it's probably not accurate to say it's a problem entirely of reliability, Vash. Okay, without getting into the technical side, let's just put it this way. They're less reliable than what we've spent $50 million procuring for ourselves. We've procured other testing devices that are more reliable, more uh, able to be used in a variety of workplaces. Uh, with the other devices we've purchased, we are using them, for example, to get our frontline teachers tested quickly. Turnaround times are fast. We're able to get them back to the, in front of their class, if they're if, obviously if they're negative, on their test. Uh, this is this is where we're using rapid testing equipment. So I guess the truth of it is, we're not using as much of the federal stuff because it doesn't work as well for our purposes as what we bought ourselves. Were you aware of that when your government was expressing frustration, though, that the federal government had not procured them the other ones fast enough for Manitoba? We were aware that the federal government had promised to produce uh, and procure for us vaccines and uh, rapid testing equipment and PPE. We knew from months ago that the PPE wasn't forthcoming and we went to other avenues to secure PPE, and most of them in Manitoba from small businesses here successfully. We were aware that we needed more rapid testing equipment and Ottawa had promised to provide it and so asked for more. It wasn't forthcoming rapidly, and as it came, we found it had limited utilitarian value, and our research showed that we could get other testing done more reliably with another product. We purchased that product. So I guess what I'm saying is we went around the federal government on these things. It's not a knock. I think they're doing their very, very best. But let's remember, throughout Canadian history, it isn't federal governments that provide health care. It's provincial governments, and today you're seeing an example of how provincial governments use their initiative to take steps to provide better health care sooner to people when they need it. I take your point on all of that, but I, I, I wonder what happens, for example, there's 620,000 tests that your government has received from the feds, and only 9,250 have been used so far. What happens to the rest of them? Have you deemed them not fit for use? Well, Vashi, to get the whole picture, you'd have to take a look at all the tests we're doing. And one of the, I'm told one of the leading provinces in doing rapid testing and it's, uh, those, those machines you're referring to don't need to be used because we spend $50 million buying others that we think work better. And we're using those because they're more reliable, because they give a faster turnaround time to us. And so they are enabling us to be able to get our people in Manitoba tested faster, more reliably, and we're able to get the results back to them in a manner that gives them the security that they can return to work uh, more quickly. Uh, I use the educators as an example, but it's frontline worker use as well. So... Uh, the story uh, has two sides to it. Yeah, we're not using as much of the federal product because we're using more of the product we bought. And the one we bought, we feel, works better for Manitobans. And, and just to uh, just before I let you go on, on that point, though, just so that I'm clear, because uh, many of sure. the medical experts I've interviewed about, in particular, the Abbott ID tests, uh, of which your province has received uh, the, the highest portion of, of all the various tests sent by the federal government, uh, have talked about it's, it's not reliable, let's say, as the gold standard PCR type of test, but it is very valuable when it comes to screening, uh, that it, its use can be scaled up. There are opportunities in many congregate settings. I take your point that you've procured your own that you feel is reliable, but I just want to be clear. Are you saying that there's going to be no effort to ramp up the use of those other tests by the federal government, you don't need to use them, you don't want to use them. What happens to them? They've got some value. Uh, so did the Ford Pinto, but it didn't mean everybody bought it. You know, I mean, we, we bought better equipment. We're using better, more reliable equipment that's useful in more venues, more effectively, with better turnaround time. That's not suggesting the Abbott ID is useless. It does have uses, as you mentioned, congregate, broad-based setting test uh, possibilities, and we are using some of the equipment for that right now. 
But the story in isolation, uh, ignoring the reality of the other steps we've taken, isn't really an accurate story or an accurate portrayal of the efforts we're taking in our province to get rapid testing out to people where they can get tested and where they can determine if they're able to get back to their students or nursing or whatever the case might be. So um, I'm giving you the overview. Our medical experts can tell you more about the rationale and are spending 50 million more to get uh, the uh, uh, bird song, we call it here, but the, the testing device that we feel is, uh, has more utilitarian value for us. Uh, but most certainly it, it is being utilized and being utilized very fully. Uh, and we hope to continue to uh, get even more machines out there so that uh, more of our folks that want to get back to work uh, with the full knowledge they're safe in doing so can do that. That's the purpose of rapid testing for us, and that's what we're using the machines we have for. Okay, Premier, I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time, as always. Appreciate it. You bet. Nice to talk to you, Vashi. You too. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.